Hello everybody, Shrouded Hand here. Today we're looking at a death that sparked a torrent of conspiracy theories and wild speculation. A death that revealed circumstances so strange that people are still discussing them five years after the event and they still can't agree on what actually happened. This is the strange death of Jeffrey Allen Lash. Jeffrey Lash had been dying for a long time. In the years leading up to his death, he had lost so much weight that his neighbours called him Skinny Bob. They called him Bob because that's what he told them his name was. Only a few people in his inner circle actually knew his real name. Part of that inner circle was his fiancée, Catherine Nebron Gorin, and her personal assistant, Dawn Bad Bunker. They lived with Jeff Lash, and they were privy to secret information about his life. He told them that he was actually a CIA trained government agent, living in Los Angeles under a false identity to keep a low profile. He was dying because he'd been poisoned by enemy spies. This poison was slow working and undetectable, but it would eventually kill him. He told them that when he died, it was very important that his body didn't fall into enemy hands. On the 3rd of July 2015, Jeff Lash collapsed in a grocery store parking lot and died. His fiancée Catherine was with him at the time and she knew exactly what to do. As instructed, she bundled him into their SUV and packed ice around his body, then she wrapped him in thick blankets. She then drove the SUV to a specific residential street and left his blanket clad corpse propped up in a driver's seat. He'd informed her that government agents would soon come to collect his body, and it was important that she wasn't in town when this happened. After leaving his body in the SUV, she returned home and packed bags for her and her PA Dawn Van Bunker. The next day they quietly left LA and drove to Oregon where they hid out in a motel. Obviously this was a super secret operation, and this meant that Dawn hadn't told any of her family that she was leaving. On the 10th of November, Dawn's mum filed a missing persons report. This led to police tracking down Dawn and Catherine in the motel and reporting back to her mother that she was safe and well. With her secret location compromised, Catherine Nebron Gorin travelled back to LA. This was two weeks after Jeffrey Lash's death, but when she drove down the street where she had left his body, she was surprised to see the SUV was still there, with Jeff's body inside. For some reason, the Black Ops secret agents hadn't been to retrieve the corpse. The reason why it managed to sit there undiscovered for two weeks is because it had blacked out windows, although I find it hard to imagine the smell wouldn't have alerted neighbours. After all, it was parked on a residential street, not in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, the discovery of his corpse must have shattered Catherine's world a little bit. If Jeff had been wrong about the government agents coming to collect his body, maybe he hadn't been completely honest about the other aspects of his life. What if the whole thing had been a lie? That would mean that the last 17 years of her life had been based on falsehoods. If you thought the story was bizarre up till now, this is where things get really wild. She phoned her lawyer and told him what had happened, and he phoned the police. Police recovered Jeff's body and then they searched the property where he lived. The townhouse where he lived actually belonged to Catherine, but when Jeff Lash moved in, he immediately began to make changes to the building. He installed a maze of poorly constructed doors and walls. Within this warren of tunnels, he limited Catherine to a small section of her own property, forbidding her to enter any of the locked off areas. After all, he was on a top secret mission and needed complete privacy. He told her it was more for her own safety than his. In return for her compliance, she was allowed to sleep on the bathroom floor using a yoga mat as a mattress. Jeff had filled the rest of the house with his own belongings and to say there was a lot of it would be an understatement. Police found millions and millions of dollars worth of stuff piled high in every room. Among the inventory of recovered items were 50,000 DVDs, 60,000 music CDs, a thousand palm pilots, a menagerie of life-sized plastic animals, a collection of medieval weapons, and a number of books on the art of seduction. More disturbing, however, was his collection of firearms and ammunition. 
police found over 1,200 guns on his property and enough ammunition to start a small war. They estimated that the guns alone had a value upwards of $3 million. They also found a collection of armoured vehicles, all with bulletproof blacked out windows and no licence plates. One of these vehicles had been modified to drive underwater. If this guy wasn't a secret agent, he certainly had the gear for it. So, a millionaire stockpiling weapons and military gear? Maybe he was just an eccentric collector? But here's the thing. Nobody really knows where Jeff Lash got the money to buy all this stuff. As far as any official records show, he never worked a day in his life. There were rumours that he'd inherited the money from his father. It was said that his father was a well-known microbiologist who had patented something that earned him millions from big pharmaceutical companies. When his father died, Jeffrey Lash inherited the millions and had been dining out on it ever since. The problem with this is that it's fairly easy to search for which patents have been filed by who and there's no record of any patents being filed by Jeffrey's father. It seems that this story was another fabrication of Jeff's, one to throw people off the scent of where the money was actually coming from. Just the sort of thing a super secret government agent would do. So, are you weirded out yet? Well, it gets stranger. See, the secret agent's black ops stuff was only part of the story. To the people he really trusted, people like Catherine Nebrongorin and Dawn Van Bunker, he revealed a deeper layer to the story. The true story of who he was and what his mission involved. Jeffrey Lash told them that he was in fact a half-human, half-alien hybrid. Part of his DNA was actually reptilian and he'd been sent here to Earth to save the planet from an interstellar war. Now, most people hearing this would just assume the guy was a crackpot, but somehow he was able to convince multiple people that this was true. Not only that, but he was able to persuade them to devote large amounts of time to helping him with his mission. When Dawn Van Bunker became Catherine's personal assistant, she wasn't allowed to meet Jeff for the first year of her employment. Only after 12 months had she proved herself trustworthy enough to meet the man, and this is when he revealed his true alien nature to her. Dawn told her mother about this alien hybrid man that she was working for. Naturally, her mother was sceptical, but Dawn insisted that she'd witnessed Jeffrey shapeshift in front of her. In an interview with Dawn's mother, she says, One day she came home, very emotional and crying. She said, There's a God, there's a God, there's a God. I said, Okay, what's going on? And she said, I saw Bob. And really, he has yellow eyes. He's got a reptilian body. And I'm like, Okay. So I started being very careful with her, mentally and emotionally. I saw major changes in six weeks that I could not explain. She was devoted to Catherine and Bob. Note here that although Jeffrey Lash was willing to reveal his reptilian body to Dawn, he was still using the false name of Bob. I guess some things are just too secret to reveal. There is another detail that lends itself to this reptilian theory. In an interview with a local restaurant owner, it was revealed that Jeffrey Lash would regularly visit and order the exact same thing, a raw filet mignon steak. He told them that he needed to eat meat with lots of blood in it to maintain his health. Now if you're into your reptilian theories, you'll know that reptilians are supposed to drink blood for their sustenance, so of course this raw steak detail did a lot to fuel online debates about Jeff's extraterrestrial origins. Although, I did read that steaks don't actually contain any blood. The red stuff that comes out of a rare steak is actually myoglobin, so maybe this theory doesn't hold up. Either way, the fact that he would only ever eat raw meat is an odd detail whether you think he was an alien or not. Anyway, there are some more down-to-earth explanations. Jeffrey Lash was a master manipulator. People that met him say that he had this penetrating gaze as if he was looking directly into your soul. He would ask probing personal questions and had a way of making people trust him implicitly enough to answer honestly. Sometimes he would ask people what they would do in strange hypothetical situations, then when they answered he would inform them that they'd passed the test. Anyone who studied cults will recognise a lot of these things, they're very similar to what a cult leader would do. 
We often marvel at how cults can convince seemingly intelligent people to think and do things which seem completely insane to an outsider. We should never underestimate the power that a charismatic leader can have over the minds of their followers. Notice how Dawn's initiation took 12 months, more than enough time to indoctrinate a mind. It wasn't just Catherine and Dawn who he convinced either. There were other women. Neighbours reported seeing a mysterious blonde woman who would arrive at Jeffrey's house every day in a blacked out Mercedes Benz with no license plates. She would get out the car and drop a green trash bag on his doorstep, then drive away. Eventually this woman was identified as Michelle Lyons. The bag she dropped every day contained food, presumably more raw meat. Despite him being engaged to another woman, Michelle referred to Jeff as her boyfriend and had made herself available to him 24-7 for 30 years, convinced that she was helping him save the world. People that know her say that she never took any holidays, always wanting to be available to help Jeff out. Michelle Lyons was a successful businesswoman and this might give us a clue as to where Jeff actually got his money. He seemed to have a habit of seducing wealthy women. Catherine with her expensive townhouse, Michelle with her successful business. It's thought that there were other women too. Once Lash had convinced them that he was humanity's only hope, he would exploit money out of them for years. Catherine said in an interview that not only did he confine her to a small section of her own house, but he would give her large fines if she failed to comply. Michelle Lyons claims that she bought Jeff about a million dollars worth of guns over the years. With a few women on the hook like this, it's easy to see how he could amass such a fortune despite appearing to have no income of his own. So does this wrap up the whole mystery nicely? Was Jeffrey just an extremely charismatic conman? Most likely, yes, although there are a number of odd details that muddy the waters just a little bit. For example, after Dawn Van Bunker was found in the Oregon Motel, she sent a letter to her parents saying, I'm going to a healing place where other people just like me will help me heal and be strong for any task I might need. As far as I can tell, this was the last time anybody heard from her. When she was first located, she was taken off the missing persons list, but I can't find any mention of her returning to her family. Bear in mind that she was a mother of two and she left them all behind when she skipped town. It's really hard to find any more information on this. The closest I could find was an article written three months after Lash's death, saying that although she'd sent the letter, she still hadn't been home or contacted her family. If anyone out there has any more information on Dawn Vad Bunker and whether she ever did return to her family, then let me know and I'll put an update in the description. If she really did disappear, then I find that very suspicious. As the story developed, it became quite clear that Jeff hadn't been completely honest with the women in his life and surely this information would have reached Dawn and she would have returned home, but where is she? Who are these like-minded people that she says she's with now? Most of the information we have on Dawn comes from interviews with her mother, Laura Van Bunker. The strange thing about her interviews is that she never seems to discount the possibility that there wasn't at least some truth to Jeff Lash's story. She says that whenever they went out with Lash, no matter where they were, there was always a black helicopter hovering overhead. This always stuck out in her mind as being something she couldn't quite explain. There's also the fact that Dawn claimed to have witnessed Jeff shapeshift, so what happened there? Can the mind be so manipulated that we see something that isn't real? Were hallucinogenic drugs involved? Was she simply lying? I guess we'll never really know for sure. There's also the fact that the coroner's report gave no official cause of death. Could the story about chemical poisoning be true? As far as I can tell, two weeks in the hot car caused his body to decompose so much that the cause of death couldn't accurately be determined. Now, I've seen forensic shows where they identify a cause of death on a thousand-year-old skeleton, so it seems odd that a two-week-old corpse would pose so much trouble, but I'm no expert on this. He told some people that he had motor neuron disease, which could be true, or it could be one of the many lies that he told people in his life. 
The last weird detail, and this isn't anything too suspicious, but it's worth mentioning. The guns they found in his house are thought to only be a very small part of his collection of weapons. Jeff paid for everything in cash, and there are rumours that he paid a 10 year advance on multiple storage units across LA, and then filled them with weapons and explosives. The only person who knew the location of these units was Jeff himself, and he seems to have taken this information to the grave. Maybe when the lease runs out on them they'll be discovered, but for now they remain a mystery. Possibly they contain more clues for message board pundits to pore over. Only time will tell. So that's the story of Jeffrey Lash. Another strange death that raises more questions than it answers. Was he an alien hybrid super spy, or simply a very manipulative man? If we apply Occam's razor then the latter explanation makes the most sense, but there's enough weird details in this story that will keep us pondering for a long time. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Massive thanks to everyone supporting me on Patreon, it really does help me out a lot. Let me know what you think of this story in the comments. There's probably some developments I've missed. The problem with searching news stories in the UK is that a lot of American sites are blocked because of some weird European law or something. I really do need to get a VPN for this stuff. Anyway, if there's any major developments that I've missed, I'll put them in the description. Until then, check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Until next time, goodbye.